In this example, we have two client machines set up. Client 1 logged in as good user, which is an administrative user, and client 2 logged in as bad user, which is another administrative user, but an account we've set up so we can place some restrictions and some constraints around. In this session, we're going to take a look at Microsoft SQL and how we can restrict the movements of Microsoft SQL, what tools access it, what other machines access it, what people access it, and also take a look at how we actually protect Microsoft SQL from particular vulnerabilities as well. In an earlier session uh, titled Remote Connections, we've already covered a lot of the firewall capabilities of critical system protection. So in this example, we'll just do a quick review. So when looking at the firewall technology used to protect Microsoft SQL, we're going to go take a look under Service Options first. We're going to go to Application Service Options. And here we'll see Microsoft SQL Server. From here we can take a look under Network Controls, and now we can take a look at the inbound and outbound rules assigned specifically to the Microsoft SQL Service. This is going to restrict the ports designated here to only being allowed to communicate and interface with the Microsoft SQL Service. If we want to take a look at the types of communication we're allowing inbound, we come under inbound and select list of rules. From here we can see we've already designated several ports that are allowed to communicate with Microsoft SQL, but if we wanted to lock this down further, we could also assign IP addresses as well. Currently, they're set up to allow any IP address inbound on the appropriate port. But if you're aware of all of the different servers and applications that should be communicating with this Microsoft SQL Server, you can assign those IP addresses together. You can either assign individual IP, or CIDR notation, or an entire subnet. We also have what we refer to as macros within Critical System Protection, which allows us to create groups of individual IP addresses. So if you have 10 IPs that make up a particular set of middleware applications or middleware servers, you could create a single group and reference that group in your firewall rule. Same applies to outbound connections as well. If you're deploying a server and you don't want Microsoft SQL to ever run on the machine, if you know that the um, purpose of this server will never include running Microsoft SQL, you can actually lock out Microsoft SQL from ever starting. And again, even if an administrator attempts to start the service, critical system protection is going to prevent that service from starting. You find that by again coming under Microsoft SQL Server, and under Advanced Options you see a piece called Alternate Privilege Level. In the first checkbox here, do not allow Microsoft SQL Server to start. This is going to prevent the service from ever starting. So this is a good option to turn on for those servers that you know will never host a Microsoft SQL Server. This prevents you from having to worry about SQL running on unauthorized service, uh, servers and also being misconfigured on those servers. Let's now take a look at how we can lock down certain SQL tools from running as well. And this could be either locally on the, on the box or trying to connect remotely into wherever your Microsoft SQL Server is stored. So we've installed the Microsoft SQL Studio on Client 1, logged in as good user, and we're going to say that good user should have privileges to execute the Microsoft SQL Studio. So here we can see it on our desktop. We're going to simply double click, and the Studio launches, and we're given the ability to log in to either a local database or a remote database. As we move over to Client 2, we see that Microsoft SQL Studio is installed here as well, and we also have a local Microsoft SQL server running on this particular system. But we're logged in as bad user, and in the CSP policy, we have specified that bad user should, not be ever, should never be allowed to execute the SQL Studio or any of the SQL tools. So here, when we try to launch the same program, you can see we receive a permission denied message. Let's take a look at how we did this in the policy of critical system protection. So first we're going to come under global policy options, resource lists, and we're going to look at the programs that we specified as no access. So globally no one should be able to access these programs. 
And here for the Microsoft SQL Studio, we've selected the actual executable itself for that particular application. What this has effectively done is, as of right now, prevented anyone or anything on the server from being able to launch the SQL Studio. What we now need to do is tell Critical System Protection that Windows is allowed to open the SQL Studio when good user launches it. So we're going to move down under Interactive Program Options. We're going to go under Default Interactive Program Options, Resource Lists, and we're going to look at our, our read-only resource list. We could have also made this writable, but since it's an application that we're not planning to modify, we're going to go ahead and make it read-only. It's a little more secure. It's going to prevent someone from overwriting the executable and launching something else instead. We're going to select lists of files that should not be modified. We're going to open the entry that we've placed here. And here you can see, again, we have the Microsoft SQL Studio executable. The program path, we're saying that Explorer or Windows is allowed to open it, but only when good user launches this particular application do we allow it to launch. Now from here, we're just allowing it to launch. We could also place network constraints around it as well. If we wanted to only allow it to communicate on certain ports or only allow it to communicate with certain IP addresses when this user launched it, we could do that as well. So for example, if we were using groups instead of users and we had multiple Microsoft SQL admin groups that were assigned to managing different sets of Microsoft SQL databases, we could actually restrict them to only connecting to the IPs that belong to their appropriate group within Active Directory. Let's now take a look at some of the features built into Critical System Protection to protect and secure Microsoft SQL overall, no matter whether it's a local connection, a remote connection, legitimate connection, or a malicious connection. We're going to first start under Service Options. Again, we're going to come down to Application Service Options. Microsoft SQL Server, and under Advanced you'll see a few checkbox enabled by default. The first block modifications to executable files. What this means is we're going to be watching the Microsoft SQL executable files and blocking anyone else or anything else from making modifications. So someone trying to replace Microsoft SQL with malicious code. We'll be monitoring that and we'll be able to block those activities and those actions in real time. Number two, blocking the registration of common ActiveX controls. So basically being able to block other things that are trying to hook in to the Microsoft SQL service itself. Number three, enabling buffer overflow detection. Looking for stack buffer overflows and being able to identify the payload and block those payloads. And then lastly, being able to look for thread injection. So we're watching the space, the memory space allocated to Microsoft SQL. And if another application tries to invade that memory space, critical system protection can take the appropriate action. When it comes to the actual data residing in a Microsoft SQL database, we have the ability to also set up that data store so that only Microsoft SQL can access it. We would do that by globally defining the data store as no access, and then coming back under Microsoft SQL resource lists, and defining that same database or that same data store as writable. What this is going to allow it is so that not even the system or an admin would be able to go and touch the database directly. All action in that database or data store would have to come through the Microsoft SQL service itself. You could also specify certain admins, certain Microsoft SQL either users or groups that had privileges to touch the database directly as well. This prevents someone from going in and deleting the database, corrupting it, or trying to modify it in any way without going through the actual Microsoft SQL service itself. We've already talked about the firewall pieces, but what about also vulnerabilities, whether they be local or remote? Somebody trying to force Microsoft SQL to do something that it normally wouldn't do. To take a look at some of the actions here that we are specifically looking for, Let's look under General Service Options, Additional Security Parameters, and List of Programs that our Defined Services Should Never Execute. 
we can go through the list here and we see things like the command shell, FTP, our net commands, things of that nature. So when we see a vulnerability or exploit that tries to force Microsoft SQL or any of our other protected services from doing something outside of the norm or launching a program like this, we have the ability to recognize that as a malicious activity and block it in real time or alert a security personnel to suspicious behavior. In summary for this session, we've taken a look at using firewall technology to lock down Microsoft SQL. We've looked at actually blocking the service from running, so perfect for machines that should not have Microsoft SQL running, preventing the executable from actually, or the service from actually starting. We've taken a look at being able to lock down the actual tools to manage and maintain Microsoft SQL, and either preventing them from running entirely or blocking them only so only certain users or groups of users can execute them. We've also looked at just some of the some of the standard technology built into critical system protection to actually lock down Microsoft SQL and protect Microsoft SQL. While we've used Microsoft SQL here as the example, this really applies to any of the major services or server applications running on either a Windows uh, server, Unix server, or Linux server. Thank you.